Hello, this video is all about circulation cells. This is the first thing we learn about when we look at weather hazards and climate change uh, in Edexcel A GCSE. So before we begin, which is a very important key term, um, this key term, global atmospheric circulation. Okay, now global atmospheric circulation describes how wind and air move around the world. Okay, you can see on this animation here, um, that the winds are moving in lots of different directions and air is constantly uh, circulating uh, around the world. Um, another important thing to bear in mind is that uh, the world is trying to move heat away from the equator. So where I'm pointing now is roughly where the equator is. And what's happening is the, the heat is moving away from the equator, it's being distributed away from the equator. So when we talk about global atmospheric circulation, it describes how air moves around and circulates uh, around the world. Okay, now, before we actually look at the circulation cells, um, we really need to understand what we mean by high and low pressure. Let's begin with low pressure. When we have low pressure, on the left-hand side of this diagram, um, the air is very, very light. So the air up here is very, very light. What that means, is that water that's on the, surf, on the surface of uh, the earth, so that could be rivers, it could be the sea, it could be lakes, uh, that, that water can evaporate from those lakes, from those rivers, from the ocean, and it can rise up, and as it evaporates, then eventually condenses and forms clouds, and it gives us rain, okay? So with low pressure, the air is rising up, it's, there's nothing to hold it down, it rises up, and it forms clouds, and we get rainfall. Okay, so next time you look outside and you see a cloudy day or a rainy day, that's low pressure. The opposite is high pressure. Now high pressure is when the air is quite heavy. Now you can't feel that on your body, but it is heavier on those days. And that high pressure is sinking. What that means is that any water that's on the surface of the earth cannot evaporate. So any water droplets can't rise up. And so we get nice, sunny, clear conditions. Now, high and low pressure, we don't normally think about temperature when we think about these. So high pressure gives us sunny conditions because the air is sinking. It stops water from evaporating. Low pressure gives us wet, cloudy conditions because the water can evaporate as the air is very light. Okay, and just to recap here, low pressure, air is rising, leading to evaporation and wet, cloudy and windy conditions. High pressure, air is sinking, this stops evaporation, leading to clear, calm and sunny conditions. Okay, so I'd like you to point at the picture which shows low pressure. So the first one, we should have pointed at this picture. So we've got cloudy conditions here, and there may be some rain there as well, that's low pressure. This one is high pressure, that's because there's a blue sky, and very sunny conditions. Okay, point at the picture which shows low pressure. We should have pointed at the one on the left. That's because the air is rising, the air is very light, so the, air, the water can evaporate, and this means that we get clouds and rain. Again, point at the picture which shows low pressure. We should have pointed at the left one, and that's because it's very windy here. Cloudy and windy, and that's generated by our low pressure. This one is high pressure, blue skies, sunny, clear conditions. Okay, so let's start looking now at circulation cells. Now, we talked earlier about how air is constantly circulating around the world, but it actually moves in a fairly systematic way. So here we have the equator. So this line here is the equator, where I'm pointing. At the equator, it's very hot, okay? And we can see that represented by the red over here. The hot air begins to rise. As it then rises towards space, it gets cold again. And as it gets cold, it begins to sink. So we can see how the air is circulating in a big loop, and this is called the Hadley cell. A similar thing happens with the ferrule cell. But this time, the air is rising here and sinking over here. 
So we've, this whole area here has sinking air, this area has rising air, and this area here has rising air as well. And finally, at the North Pole, we have air that's sinking. Okay, so there's three big movements of air. The Hadley cell, the feral cell, and the polar cell. So what I'd like you to do is try and work out which one is missing on the picture. So this one here, have a think about which cell you, you think it might be. So we should have worked out this one is the feral cell. Okay, it's not at the top, it's not the polar cell at the top, it's not the one near the equator, it's the one in the middle. Right, which cells are being pointed at here? So these are near to the equator. You should have selected or identified the Hadley cells. Okay, that's because they're near to the equator. Here we've got air rising, and then here we've got air sinking. Okay, which cell is being pointed at on this diagram? You should have identified the feral cell. Okay, that's because here's the equator. Here we have the Hadley cell and the Hadley cell here. Then we've got the feral cell, and then we've got the polar cell up here at the top. The same thing happens in the northern hemisphere, north of the equator, and the same thing happens in the southern hemisphere, south of the equator. Okay, and a slightly trickier one, which one is being pointed at over here? Have a think about it for a minute. And we should have identified the polar cell. Now, if we have a look in the green bar down here, we can see here's the equator, here's our air rising at the equator and sinking, so this is our Hadley cell. Here we've got the feral cell, so here's air rising and sinking. And this one is the polar cell, so air sinking at the North Pole, rising here. Now, something that we have to remember, and it's very important, is that the equator is the hottest line of latitude. So what that means is this is the hottest line of, that goes around the world, okay? Um, and the reason for that is because the Earth is curved. Now, because the Earth is curved, that means the sun's rays hit the equator directly. Whereas if we go further north, we come nearer to the North Pole, as the sun's rays hit the Earth, they're spread out over a wider area, and therefore they have less energy. So if we have a look at a torch, and we think about a torch, if you point a torch directly onto a point, it gives you more light at that point, because it's directly pointed all of the energy and all of the light is directed at one point. If, however, your torch is pointed at an angle, like this one over here, the light is spread out over a wider area. And that means that that area gets less uh, intense light, because it's, the amount of light is the same in both torches, but in this one, it's spread in a small area, area, and this one, it's spread over a very large area, okay? So the equator is the hottest line of latitude, and hot heat is trying to get away from the equator. Okay, so here we've got our uh, diagram again of the three circulation cells. So remember, we've got the Hadley cell, which is near to the equator. We've got the feral cell, which is the next one up. Then we've got the polar cell at the north and south uh, pole. The same thing happens in the northern hemisphere as the southern hemisphere down here, but we're, we're going to focus on the northern hemisphere. Okay, so let's begin by looking at the equator. So here we've got the equator. Um, as we said earlier, hot air is rising. I think about what type of pressure this would lead to. We said earlier, if air is rising, it brings water with it, evaporated water. This leads to low pressure, and that will give us uh, cloudy and wet conditions. Okay, so along the equator, it's very, very hot. As the air rises, it brings moisture with it, and that leads to low pressure and very cloudy and wet conditions. So along the equator, it's very, very wet. If we move up now to between the Hadley and the Ferrell cell, we can see here the air is actually sinking. But before we do that, we need to remember what this line of latitude is called. So here we've got 
this line of latitude is called the trop Tropic of Cancer. So here, the air is sinking, leading to high pressure and sunny, clear conditions. Okay, so uh, if you think about somewhere like Morocco, which is just over here, um, they often get very, very sunny conditions, very clear blue skies. Uh, so along the Tropic of Cancer, the air is sinking, leading to high pressure and sunny conditions. Okay, let's move on up. And we're now going to go to 60 degrees north. And this is between the feral and the polar cells, this area here. This is roughly where the UK is, where we are. Okay, so we can see that here, the air is rising, leading to low pressure and cloudy, wet conditions. And if we think about the UK, we often get very cloudy weather in the UK, we often get lots of rain. That's because generally the air is rising here between the feral and the polar cell, bringing with it moisture, evaporation, forming clouds, and then we get rain. Okay, now we said at the equator, hot air rises. So the opposite happens at the North Pole. So here, cold air sinks. And as it sinks, it stops moisture from evaporating, so no water can evaporate. This leads to high pressure and sunny conditions. So if you go to the North Pole, it will normally be very icy, but it will also, most of the time, you'll see blue skies and sunny conditions. Okay, so uh, let's just check our understanding. So can you study figure eight? So this is this uh, diagram over here. Can you identify the location on the globe which has low pressure? Is it the North Pole, 30 degrees north, South Pole, or the equator? So can you please have a think about that and choose A, B, C, or D? Okay, we should have chosen D, the equator. Okay, so if we have a look along the equator, remember we get low pressure here because the hot air is rising. At 30 degrees north, we would get high pressure because air is sinking. And at the north and south pole, we'd also get high pressure because the air is also sinking. Very cold air is sinking. Right, we're going to need to pause the video now. What I'd like you to do is to match up the letters A, B, and C with the correct description on the left hand side. Okay, so can you pause the video and have a go at this activity, please, in three, two, one. Okay, welcome back. So the first one we should have uh, decided is C. Now that's because here, between the feral and the Hadley cell, uh, air is sinking. This creates high pressure, and therefore countries along this line, which is the Tropic of Cancer, get dry and sunny conditions. But number two, the air is sinking here because it's very cold. This creates high pressure leading to dry and sunny conditions. That was B, so the North Pole, cold air sinking, giving you high pressure. And therefore the last one is A at the equator. Air rises here, hot air rises. This creates low pressure leading to very wet and cloudy conditions. So uh, we've looked there at what we mean by global atmospheric circulation, and we've looked at the three circulation cells, the Hadley cell, the feral cell, and the polar cell. And we've looked at how they work and the weather you'd expect, or the climate you'd expect, at uh, each of the points between the cells, okay? So the key things to take away from this, the equator is the hottest line of latitude. This is zero degrees here. Uh, this is because the Earth is curved, so it receives a more direct angle of sunlight along the equator, and then heat moves away from the equator. Number two, there are three large circulation cells. So the three large cells in which air is circulating, they move heat around the world, and those cells are called the Hadley, Feral, and Polar cells. When air rises, it leads to low pressure. This gives us wet, cloudy, 
windy conditions. And then when air sinks, when we have high pressure, uh, it gives us very clear and sunny conditions. And that's because the sinking air stops evaporation from happening. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. And if you have any further questions, please speak to your geography teacher.